Hai Zuru. Halo. You know Peter was going? I don't know uh, about him, his schedule, but I think he will join. Okay. Hey, you are not on the... Hey, Is it you were yes. not on the call yesterday with the Corda, right? Sorry? You were not on the call with Corda yesterday, right? Oh, yesterday, yesterday's uh, call. Uh, I I was in that call. I didn't speak, but I joined that call. Okay. Hey, Rahama. Sorry for being late. Hey, Cindy. Hey, hey. Peter. No hey. All right. Uh, give me one second. Let me share my screen. Whoa, why does it not let me share my screen? Oh yeah, okay. Almost there. Hold on a second. Maybe I forgot to publish it. I remember creating an agenda document, but now I just don't see it. Give me one more second. Wow. No. No agenda document. All right, let me just create one real quick. Because we need it to show the or I can just show you all of them, it doesn't matter. Oh, I got it. The legal obligation. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it has to be done. Sorry, that's why I'm struggling to make sure that we do it because we have to. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Welcome everyone to the Hyperledger Cacti Maintainers meeting. Please abide by the end teacher's policy. Notice that I'm showing on the screen and also the Hyperledger Code of Conduct, which you can find linked to on the agenda document.
Uh, with that said, I just wanted to say there's one extra ad hoc discussion item that I added before we get started with all the others is that I was and still am unfortunately completely overwhelmed with the very large number of applications that we got for the mentorships. So I've been working on scoring all those resumes. There's hundreds of them, literally hundreds. And I, I'm not done yet. I actually have to write men an email pleading for some deadline extension <laughs> as usual. She probably won't even be surprised because I do it all the time. I struggle with deadlines. Uh, but yeah, that's just the bottom line. It, it's an urgent thing that I had to drop everything else to just really push through and finish. And I'm not done yet, but that's what I've been working on. I have these ginormous spreadsheets with the exported list of applicants. And then I, I create the scoring based on the experience, what technical skills they have communication skills, et cetera, try to keep it objective, try to keep it fair and try to make sure that everyone has a shot, not just, uh, you know, throw names in a hat and then pull one kind of thing. So that's my update. And I saw that Cindy managed to merge the, the 2.0 alpha release pull request. So I figured I add, I should add the discussion item for that just to check in and ask if there's anything else that you need my help with right now. I know that there's a bunch of other things that I need to be doing, but uh, is there anything that's like blocking you right now? Because then I will work on those things tonight. Sandy, go ahead. Sandy? Maybe you're muted. You will see the talk, so you can check it. He said hi. Uh, now we can, but okay, maybe sorry. your sound is lagging. No, actually the head headphones, uh, there were some issues with the headphone. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, I was going to say there's no issues as such uh, in which I will need your help. Uh, there were some bugs that I identified in the release, in the previous release. So I fixed them and opened a PR for that. Okay, so I do need to go and review that quick and help with that if there's issues. Okay. Yeah. Also, so, uh, I... You're gone. Yeah, I was saying I updated that the release management PR added the instructions uh, for the Weaver packages. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. That's important. The The guiding principle there is if, if you and me get hit by the bus, you know, mm -hmm. it's sorry, it's, it's not something you want to think or talk about but yeah if if you're gone for whatever reason anyone else who has that document should be able to release the software mm -hmm. and so even though it seems like an annoying chore it's super important that we have that documentation so thank you for updating that thanks mm -hmm. so, so what about the bezel failures uh they are still failing i'm not able to figure out why Okay, do you want to quickly discuss that? Maybe Peter has some ideas. Sure. sure. Uh, so, Peter, I opened an issue. Maybe you can check that. Uh, issue number uh, 2423. 2423. So, our like when we are trying to deploy the contracts on a Beso network uh, using Truffle Migrate, mm -hmm. uh, they are failing. I have attached the logs there. Earlier, I thought that it was because of the PR change, but uh, now I, when I test it locally, uh, even then it's failing. And even oh. when we got the changes in the workflow, uh, still it's failing. So I, I guess it's something else. Okay, so, so then it seems it's not that related to this. It's not really well. I think uh, Sandeep, uh, you said that uh, tests were passing before rise uh, merge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. were passing before that, uh, and after that started failing. 
but even when i revert those changes uh, still it's failing and it's failing even when i try to set up locally so i mean mm -hmm. there the workflow doesn't affect it so i guess there's some other issue can you walk me through can i reproduce it locally on my machine quick or does it require extensive setup um it's easy i mean it's just a couple of commands you can run if you want if you want to do it now uh sorry i'm on the wrong computer so i can maybe i can uh i just have to switch to the other branch with the dev container um, yeah okay give me one second and let me share my other screen because mm -hmm. it's easier if you can look at it Share screen window VS Code. All right, so I'm on this branch, which has the dev container set up. Build and reopen container. Yeah, I'm stuck in this limbo because. I really needed to fix our dev container because it had some issues in there where mm -hmm. interns were unable to launch the dev container and that was plaguing us throughout the entire internship last year. So I really wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that this year when the interns are starting, the dev container is stable and it just works. It's just another one of those things that is urgent because if things moving ahead as time moves ahead. We have to select uh, candidates by end of this month, right? No, we have to select candidates by yesterday midnight or EOD, <laughs> I think. I think 15th was the deadline, May 15th. No, May 15th the deadline for submission. Wait. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That's what oh. I've been uh, telling Sandeep uh, that we need to start looking at the, yeah, it says 5th April to 15 May mentee application period on LFX mentorship, 16 May to 30th May mentee application review and application applicant interview, then 31st oh. May to 5th June select mentee notification and acceptance. So yeah, uh, we, <laughs> we have earmarked the, the next two weeks for the uh, oh interviews. My God. Oh my Does that save you a lot of work, Peter? Did I just save you a ton of work? Yeah, I mean, okay. the work is going to be the same, but you, you saved me a ton of stress <laughs> because I was going to be up all night grading oh. resumes. <laughs> oh, I God, had a hint of that so when much. you mentioned that uh, early in this call. I was wondering what you were, okay. Look, now I get it. <laughs> yeah, you were like, what is he talking about? <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you. That's yeah. great news. Okay. Okay, then we have extra time to to deal with this issue. So, Sandy, what 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 should I run? What do I do? Um, go to the Weaver folder. Go to the Weaver folder. Then tests. There's a test folder here. Uh, go to network setups and then Besu. And run make start net make start hyphen network one. Okay. Uh, without okay. space. All right. Oh, uh, just one thing. You need to be using Java 11. Uh, oh, oh, that's going to be. OK, uh, then the, the, I'll do the, that on my own time. I don't want to spend. Yeah, 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 sure. I don't want to. I don't want everyone watching me set up Java 11. That's that's terrible way of using mm -hmm. your time. So, OK, I'll and try this a... on my own time. We can move on. Yeah, and it also needs DMUX. I'm not sure whether here it would work. Um, yeah, the dev container might not have it, but. Uh... <laughs> okay, for now, maybe you can look at the logs uh, attached in the issue. Right, let me do that. <clears throat> let me share my Chrome tab. Uh, 
So you have the set exchange basic log. Log closes down. So the migration is the contract code can be stored. Please check your gas limit. Whoa, that's weird. So it's deploying the migrations. And then the deployment fails. Yeah. We were using grass price to be zero in our tests. Development. Initial migration one. If I search for this file, will I actually find it? Oops. Yeah. Uh, I can't see what you're seeing right now. Yeah, oh, I can't see sorry. Either. Yeah. Sorry, I moved on to my VS code and then I couldn't. Ah, I'm so sorry. Uh, well, I don't know. I just shared the entire screen. It's easier. Okay, so this initial migration JS, which one? Yeah, so simple asset or simple state? Simple asset. Simple asset. <clears throat> oh, it's literally just migration. So, so which is right there. Well, this is just a boilerplate stuff anyway. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, then the other question is the ledger version where you're deploying, where is that coming from? Is that one of our all in one containers or some other container, or does this just run uh, on the on the, the truffle on fake Ethereum VM thing? There's no container we are using. Um, I'm not exactly sure how it's set up because Dinakaran was the one who created this. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you want to see how we are bringing it up, bringing the network up, you can see in that folder test network setups, Besu, and then scripts. Tests. Oh, that's right. Network setup ISO and scripts. So here. Setup network. Yeah. So you have, you create a directory, you copy the config file, Bezu operator generate blockchain config, first node keys. More keys, so you set up four nodes, you come back out, you signer. Right. Validator nodes. And then you put in coin bases. Team accessions. Sleep 10 seconds. Node session sh. So then this is that says Bezu. So this Bezu executable. Does yeah. that mean that you have to have Bezu installed on your host OS where you're developing? So it has to be on the path. Yes, I think yeah. so. The instructions oh. to uh, download and install the Bezu. It's okay, really and the, yeah. in, in the CI, the installation that happens for this Bezu, is the version there pinned or is it like set to latest? Uh, let me check. Because that's usually my first guess. If if it's set to latest mm -hmm. and in the Bezu main, it maintainers just released some update that just broke something, then 
it the problem is that you you didn't pin it to a specific version mm -hmm. and then that's why the test just uh, kind of aged out and started failing but I'm, i don't know for sure it's just my first guess when something like this happens okay once again if i will check that um it's pinned to 22.7 so it's fixed i guess oh damn okay Hmm. Okay, then I'll just try to reproduce it myself as well and see what happens. Okay. I'm guessing that, and and then it's going to be good in the sense that I I just worked on the the new dev container, so I can very easily simulate fresh environments that are very similar to the CI itself. So I have a I have a good chance of being able to reproduce any issue that the mm -hmm. CI has. Mm -hmm. Oh, just one more thing. It does happen consistently, right? So it's not like sometimes it fails and sometimes it doesn't. It always fails. Yeah, yeah. OK, that helps a lot because the worst kind of bugs is when sometimes it fails. Yeah. And then you yeah. don't know if it was some rate limiting with the Docker pool from Docker Hub or. or Sometimes we've had uh, we had some quarter test fail because uh, the Maven registry was unavailable or something. Yeah. Right, I know. Yeah, we yeah we have that on the CIT. Sometimes the the GitHub container registry just returns an HTTP 500 to an mm. image that I know is there because we've been using it for months. Yeah. Okay, but it's not one of those. So it's definitely something related to the setup. So I'm still thinking it could be that something is not pinned as a version. Mm -hmm. But if it's not the Bezu version, then actually the other thing it could be is mm -hmm. Truffle, because Truffle. I remember looking at your package chase and uh, yeah. files, and I remember saying that if you can, you should. Yeah, 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 not have auto upgrade. So all of these, the yeah, I wanted to talk about nothing. that. So auto upgrades, uh, you want to avoid using tildes and carrots and just uh, just for specific versions. Yeah, literally what I just. Uh, wait, am I? Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. So yeah, yeah. just disappear the carrots and uh, the other one, the tilde. I don't remember all the syntaxes that NPM has because there's multiple markers, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. You just don't want it to auto upgrade because someone will pretend mm -hmm. to be a friendly new maintainer to, I don't know, the chai library. And then they will yeah. push a new update with malware. And I'm, I'm not making this up. Someone has done this a couple of years ago. It was crazy. Huh. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the re uh, yeah, okay. I mean, on the flip side, the benefit of doing that is uh, genuine uh, package publishers may push security updates. So, yes. we need those. yeah, we lose that. You do have to manually update it every time. And mm -hmm. that's annoying. I agree. There are tools for it that so that you can run a single command and it upgrades every single version all at once in mm -hmm. all the package JSONs. So there's automation to make that a little easier, but uh, but yeah, also, it's it's more manual stuff. Also, depend about tells us, right? You see, yeah, that's the other great. thing. If there's known vulnerabilities and older versions, then depend about sends an alert. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the principle we had for prior major releases, as in the only one, the one point oh, it was that. We cannot have open dependabot alerts for critical and high severity in the production code, as in the, the components that are actually shipped as a production code. And uh, yeah. And then it's it's an uphill battle anyway, because a week after we released 1.0, new critical vulnerabilities came out in the existing libraries anyway. So it's it's never going to be perfect, 
but that's just you just have to keep shoveling it. It's maintenance. True, true. Yeah, we, we, we've seen something similar ourselves. Yeah, I'm seeing a new version of Truffled published six days ago. Probably since then it's really. It could be. I'm not saying for sure that it is, but it is a candidate. It's either okay. Truffle or or it even could be Truffles, one of one of their own dependencies. And mm -hmm. well, the ledger is out because the ledger is the same version. We established that. Um, yeah. Usually when things fail like this, it's because of the dependencies. Okay. We have like four minutes left. Uh, I had a couple of issues I wanted to just bring up. Okay, so oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, no, I no, can thanks. stay longer if you all have more time, by the way. Tonight, it's I don't have to rush away. Uh, we don't know how to keep you up late. So uh, I'll just uh, I'll be brief. Uh, so uh, following up from the quarter call yesterday, um, the... I think uh, like going forward, maybe we should uh, come up with a sort of a two things, a joint presentation. And with that, in that we should come up with like a matrix of features that we, that we support, because uh, you, you remember, like we did this exercise about a year and a half ago, where we had that huge Google doc and we had this table with feature comparison between Cactus, Weaver, UE and all. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and Firefly also, I think of that. Um, so, I think we should uh, have that matrix so uh, and uh, or maybe make some slides on those so that uh, we can just show that to uh, to them. Like uh, you know, if we have a follow up meeting with uh, Richard and others, we can uh, we, we can show it to them. I think that will avoid uh, uh, confusion. Otherwise, right now I think like we have separate presentations. Right? There's uh, there's a cactus presentation. There's we have our own presentation, and then we have the uh, the the presentation where we have the uh, integration roadmap, uh, but mm -hmm. I think it'd be good to just have one integrated presentation so we don't uh, confuse people so, because that's what we want to tell people. This is basically what Hyperledge Cacti offers, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree, hundred percent. And honestly, I don't even want to spend too much time my myself. Uh, preparing any sort of presentation if you feel like that document we have or any slides that you have or what, whatever we prepared earlier is fine then it's fine by me it's because i don't care that much about any of that because my priority in this whole interaction is to make sure that if r free and fidelity if any of them or all of them want to come in and contribute some of the things that they have done, I want to make sure that that happens regardless of, even if uh, they look at our code and we look at their code and we are like, well, it's going to be some work to, to make these fit together in any way. I just want them to have the opportunity to come in and contribute it because we are always glad to have more contributors and it sounded like they have a different flavor of something that we may not have because we have HTLCs and they have that other thing, which right. is specifically not HTLCs. And uh, honestly, that was the most important sentence to me in the entire presentation. When they said, when they explained that, I was like, okay, well, then we have, we have a win-win situation here because they want adoption of their uh, methodology. And if they open source some of it or all of it, that definitely helps. And we want new contributors. So it's like, in my mind, it's a done deal. We just have to be welcoming. So because of all this, this is how I think about it. I'm very open about it as well. I will also write an email to explain all of this to them as well. So because of this, it doesn't, matter to me too much what we put in slides that we will present about cacti you know i'm i'm not one to cherry pick and argue about the, the small details of what we call boxes maybe sometimes i get into that but i try to avoid it and i definitely won't really 
have a lot of requirements on it this time because because uh, of what I just said. I don't it, I don't think it matters that much. Yeah, generally I agree with you. I uh, the only thing uh, uh, I want to avoid is uh, too much reinvention of the wheel. Like uh, uh, as you rightly said, I mean there's HTLC. I think at this point maybe we have two kind of HTLC implementations. There's uh, one in the uh, in the cactus packages, and there's one mm -hmm. the Beaver packages. So at some point we would like to uh, merge them and get them into one. Uh, yeah. Clearly, what uh, uh, Corda has is a different way of doing asset swaps. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but, but the the foundational way they're doing it is by generating and validating proofs, right? And there mm -hmm. we have something that does something similar. So that's why I was I mentioned the uh, the example that we can demonstrate in uh, from the Weaver packages, which is mm -hmm. how do you transfer an asset? This is not the asset swap because asset swap we are doing via HDLC, but asset transfer we are doing in uh, much the same way that they are uh, doing asset swap, which is you generate a proof of a uh, of a uh, pledging of an asset in one ledger, and then you burn it, and then uh, that proof suffices as uh, uh, as evidence for you to recreate the asset in different ledgers. That's the form of an asset transfer. So uh, we have the like some basic uh, building blocks for those things. Just want to make sure. I mean, we can do the same way as we are doing with the, you know Weaver and Cactus, which is get the code in and then we'll figure out how to uh, eliminate redundancy. So that's I'm 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 fine with that too. But just uh, we want to I want to have this sort of a consolidated slide just so we can show them, okay, we possess these capabilities. Now you bring this, you, you possess these capabilities too. Of course, the uh, uh, what you realize out of it is uh, a bit divergent from what we have, which is great that you can, mm -hmm. you can bring that in. But uh, uh, in the longer term, we will need to consolidate and eliminate redundancy. That is, that's what I wanted to convey with that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, yeah, we just have to serve this information in a way that they don't feel like, oh, if, if we come in, we're going to get crushed or whatever. Uh, yeah, but you, you already know that because we were having the same discussion before Cactus and Weaver got together. So you know exactly yeah. what my, uh, attitude towards this is just make sure that everyone feels comfortable everyone feels like okay this is going to be great yeah uh yeah that's it so i think we're on the same page i agree yeah and i think it'd be a great win for us if they got on board so. yeah oh yeah for sure i i would very much like that i think that'd be great and even if <laughs> i'm guessing they probably have a lot of stuff uh java based so that will also add some sort of diversity to the code base because now we'll have Rust, we'll have TypeScript and probably a bunch of Java. And uh, yeah. and they, they said they were implementing the, the EEA standard. Uh, so, so we can also just name things based off of that. I can see us supporting multiple standards uh, that helps with the package naming uh yeah yeah i'm just rambling now but yeah it would it would be awesome to have them on board okay yeah i mean next time uh, i think i can explain i can uh okay I, i'll work on also on uh explaining stuff in an email and uh, uh i'm sure we'll have a follow-up conversation where we can get to explain the system in more depth so yeah okay, yeah i will I think, definitely also yeah. write an email just to mm -hmm. basically explain what I just explained. Sure. Uh, Cause uh, that's my only proposal. My only big takeaway from the entire thing is, Hey, yeah, I think this is a good match. We should get together. Sure. I had a couple of other quick things. So uh, we were looking mm -hmm. at the code uh, in the cactus API, uh, the code API, uh, so just wondering where do you have a, an example, an end to an example where the validator interface gets used? Validator interface. I think the I validator. 
Does socket IO valve? No, that's Python. Well, let me share my screen again so that we can look at it together. Sunny, we saw this in the Cactus Core API, right? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, TypeScript. Look at the I verifier. Yeah. I'm guessing this one. Yeah, where is the, yeah, what's this one? Where are all the exports? I think if you go to public. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I verify yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I verify. yeah. Where are these getting exercised, you know, in any example? Question, maybe Israel knows because this was <laughs> added by. Uh... Yeah, I, I think that I verifier is implemented in, um, the connector side and uh, application or business logic indirectly connect, uh, talks to that I, uh, the verifier through uh, the um, I forgot <laughs> uh, the other uh, client API. And client API when when business logic uh called the uh, client API then uh API class then it uh, sends mess message uh through socket IO interface and the receiving side is the uh, the verifier. Wait, where what folder is this? Wait. I can send the link to this. Okay, it's a kind of basic connector. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, but the test package, it's they're easy to mix up because there's uh -huh. a cactus plugin ledger connector basic, but also there's a cactus test plugin ledger connector basic. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. That's there's a reason why it has to be done that way so that the dependencies don't get circular. But I know it's a bit overwhelming, the 1 million packages that we have. But I uh, I put the exact path for the test file that I was looking at into the Zoom chat. OK. Is that an example where uh, this gets used? And one of the end-to-end -end examples? Well, I this think... test looks end-to-end, -end, actually, because it, it pulls up a ledger from the containers. And then, and then it instantiates this verifier, and then it has the I verifier monitor. So this looks to me like this is an actual example of how it works. I think yeah, uh, I think that's the case. Uh, how would we exercise this here? We're running the Mocha test. Sorry. How would we? How would we exercise this? How so this is run just. The... Uh, like you, yes, you okay. need to look at the imports and then you see that it's a just one. The other ones are tap. This one's just, so you can just say yarn just, and then the, the relative path of the test file. I don't know if, it's probably not gonna work for me. Yeah, because I don't have the dependencies installed, but that's basically what you would do. You just, uh, let me also put this in the chat. You just run this command and then it runs the test. Yeah. And uh, the other one that looks interesting is the verifier.ts, which looks like it is an implementation. Yeah, so this is where it says implements I verifier. So you probably yeah. also want to look at the code of this. Right, where is that? Uh, Cactus verifier client package. And then within that, it's the usual structure, but I, I put the path in the Zoom chat. It's not bad. So the, uh, all the end-to-end -end examples in the examples folder, do any of them uh, use these? I think, I think uh, asset exchange example used that uh, the old, all, all the uh, features, I think. Okay.
this one, do this counter yeah, as a trace. Yes, yes. Find them folder. I think it doesn't uh, directly three. call that. And then you get the verifier from the verifier factory. So I'm guessing that's where it happens then. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm kind of just rolling with this. Uh, verifier Ethereum. And more verifier factory, get verifier. Does this example yeah. do something similar to what uh, uh, they were showing yesterday? Uh, asset swap thing? Yeah. Actually, this uh, this example does uh, asset uh, exchange. It's it's not exactly the same, but it uses fabric uh, in Ethereum ledgers and in Ethereum ledger, it uh, sends coin and uh, NFT is transferred in the uh, fabric net fabric uh, ledger. So I think this example is close to uh, very similar to uh, yesterday's demo. Okay. We were trying to look for an example where uh, you can uh, uh, make commitment in one ledger, let's say in Fabric, and uh, then uh, uh, generate a proof and then validate that in a in another ledger, let's say Corda. So we have an example for that within the in the Weaver testnet. So we're looking for something similar here. Do we have to, is there something already there or do we have to uh, create it? Um, sorry, say again. So an example whereby uh, you have a, you have two ledgers, Fabric and, and Corda. And in, uh, let's say in the Fabric ledger, you have a, you make a commitment. Uh, some sort of some asset state uh, changes and then uh, we want to generate the proof of that and then uh, validate it within the Corda ledger and um, that create triggers a commitment in the Corda ledger. No, we don't do things in that way, I think. Uh, I, I sent a link to an uh, image that showing what it does in this example. Okay. Um, yeah. It 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 does uh, transfer in one ledger and and uh, does uh, another transfer in another ledger, but I think it doesn't send proof to a uh, fabric network. But uh, it it is uh, uh, determined in the business logic, not not in the uh, uh, the ledger smart contract or something like that. So we we do things in a different way from uh, their example. Right, uh, but if you want, uh, we wanted to show a use case whereby we could use uh, different ways to, to achieve something like this, right? Yes, so yes. Let's, I think, uh, yeah. for, for that purpose, I think this one is uh, fit. It's not fit, right? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think, uh, let me study this and uh, the discounted asset. Okay, I'll study this example then. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, sorry, final thing. I know we are 15 minutes over. I just wanted to uh, talk about documentation. So right now, the uh, we still are referring to the Weaver documentation published under the Weaver namespace because uh, 
you know we don't we didn't have the packages published yet uh but we do need to have a common documentation page right and this is part of the what you've been discussing and as project best practices too yeah so, i know i agree uh, sorry i just had absolutely no time to work on the documentation at all now let's let's do that i mean maybe we can set up a separate uh, some separate time to to discuss and uh, and work on that you you free sometime later this week with tomorrow tomorrow i mean i can do it like uh, you know maybe after the around the toc call maybe before slightly before or a bit after i'm okay with that uh as it, that works next week but not this week i just messaged tracy saying i have to miss the toc call this week i have another thing mm -hmm. uh okay then let's well, I mean, just uh, it's how much it. after the toc call like the toc call ends at eight my time yeah i could start at 8 30 so 30 minutes after the toc call and finally okay but this then... but this is next week you said right or tomorrow uh no if we do that then i can do it this week as well Okay, that sounds good to me. I can I can join you and we can uh, we can look at it. Okay. Isru, is it okay for you? Yes. I think it's going to be really late for Isru, right? Um, I think it is late, but uh, in late, if it is very late, uh, then there will be no <laughs> no conflicting schedules. So. Probably that's a bit, uh, but that works for me. Um, wait, sorry, so in San Francisco, that will be the 18th, because 16th is Tuesday, 17th Wednesday, and then we are saying. 8.30. Ouch, that's uh, past midnight. Oh, no, no, that's no, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, we can Are do it sure? like Friday, Friday morning, uh, like the same time, exactly two days from now. Uh, Friday um, morning, Friday? The same time. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I think on Friday, uh, if if it start in same same uh, exact same time, then I only have thirty minutes because uh, there's uh, another meeting already scheduled. So I think thirty minutes should be okay. I just want to go over uh, the document we have and okay. then sketch out what we need to build. So. Okay, then yeah, then that that is uh, okay for me. Just to clarify, is this what you mean? One thirty p.m. Yeah. Okay. Yes. One thirty to two two p.m. Yes. All right. Give me one second to double check. Uh, that's my first day evening. I think it's available. Just have to make sure I'm not lying. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that should be okay. I can I can send out invite for that. That's basically forty eight hours from today's meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that works. Let me I, let's just create it right now because otherwise I may forget. And events. Time maintainers. Starts nine thirty. Well, let's try to finish it in half an hour, but you no, know, no, it goes however long it goes. Shoot, I have to copy paste from the other one. I always forget which link. Yeah. 
let's not put that out there. Oh, and it's birthday, my time, half an hour, 9.30 Pacific time. That's the right one. Add event and invite group. We just mentioned the description documentation. Documentation. This is an important requirement to be able to reach the Okay, it's out there. Oh, Thanks. and agenda documents. I don't know what happened. I don't know why. Now, if I click create meeting agenda, it comes out here, but it doesn't matter. So this is going to be on the 18th. Get time maintainers agenda. Announcements. But there's a boring TV. Yes, okay. Sorry, I just figured I will do all of that while screen sharing so that we can all see how it's done anyway. Yeah, no, that's good. All right, then uh, thanks everyone for joining. And uh, if anything urgent comes up, let me know. I'll, I'll, but I'll otherwise I will look into this test failure issue that Sandy was talking about. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.